Britain has more than 10,000 miles of coastline. It protects and enthralls in equal measure. From the northern reaches of Scotland to the playgrounds of the rich and famous in the south, all the fun of the fair in the east to fishing ports in the west. But these shores and the people who live on them also need looking up. That's where the coastline cops come. A special kind of police officer taking on a very different type of challenge. That's the side of Queen Mary. She's got a quite clean bottom. Tonight, protecting multi-million pound lifestyles in Hampshire. Just checking to see that you haven't been to any terrorist training camps in Pakistan or anything. Chasing burglars in lower stock. Drama on the beach in Cumbria. Oh my God, are they still alive? And in Scarborough, every parent's worst night. We've got a young lass that's gone missing, nine year old. summer. But thanks to the recession, nearly 40 million Britons holidayed at home, putting the coastline cops under pressure. Nowhere more so than in Southampton. The Solent is Britain's busiest waterway. Every year a million ships pass through this channel, which runs between the south coast of England and the Isle of Wight. It's policed by an elite team of coastline cops, led by Sergeant Andy Simpson. Equipped with two high-speed ribs and three patrol vessels, their job is to protect the two and a half billion pounds worth of leisure craft that use these waters, and make sure unwanted visitors are kept at bay. There's an awful lot of places in Southampton Water that we keep an eye on from the counter-terrorist angle. Um, not just the, the fixed installations like the refineries and, and the power station, but you've also got things like the, um, the big iconic cruise ships, even the ferries and what have you. You know, we've got to accept that in the past terrorist attacks have occurred on the, on the transport infrastructure. So it's obviously something that we, we do take very seriously. This week, Sergeant Simpson has an extra challenge. It's Cowd, the biggest sailing festival in the world, attracting a thousand racing boats, 8,000 sailors and a hundred thousand eager spectators. Tragically, every year there, there always seems to be one serious accident or a fatality, usually not related to the regatta whatsoever. Um, it's just obviously a lot more people in cows, a lot more boat owners in cows that week, so the chances of it happening are, are, are greater. Simpson and his coastline cops are determined that this year, on their watch, things will be different. At least that's the general idea. Look, what I think is a water skier down here that's fallen off. Um, if he is skiing here, he's in a very silly place to ski. All right there. This is an extremely silly place to be skiing. You're right in the middle of the channel, so apart from the fact it's illegal, um, you're going to get run down by a red jet or something. We got told it's No, no. You see the green boy? You just have a look at the line of the green boys and make sure you're well the other side of them. So that's the main shipping channel. That's where all the boats are going to be coming, belting down here at 30 odd knots. And if you've got a water skier in the water, um, he's going to be right, right on mess of. Sergeant Simpson hasn't always been a seafaring cop. Once he was a landlubber, pounding the streets of Southampton. But now, after 11 years with the Marine Unit, he would never even dream of returning to work in a big city. It is, it is a good job, I have to admit. I can't think of another job within the police force that I'd, I'd choose to do. I've, I've done a fair few of them, and this is by far the best one. This is the coast of Suffolk in East Anglia. A hundred miles of golden beaches and sleepy seaside towns like Southwold, Bulborough and Warburswick. Bucking the trend is Suffolk's liveliest coastal town and the most easterly point in the UK, Lowestoft. Keeping the peace here is a small team of coastline cops led by Inspector Sarsfield Donoghue, a veteran who used to work in Harlow on the edge of London. 
He believes in leading from the front, and the move to the coast hasn't changed him one bit. I mean, I've, I've always been very hands-on. I mean, I've been a police officer uh, 18 years now, and I've always been uniformed and, and response and front line. And I will make time to go out with the officers and patrol with them. I kind of like to lead by example. I won't ask my PC to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. Donoghue's team is facing a challenge from burglars. Two burglaries took place in Blunderston and Corton on the 20th. There's been a sudden surge of break-ins, six a week, and Donoghue's determined to put a stop to it. Certainly working in a coastal area compared to a town, a lot of the crime is committed by locals. So you, you will get to know who's, who's who and, and you know the faces. Knowing and seeing all the faces is one thing. Catching them at it is quite another. But this time, they have a footprint found at the scene of a break-in. Footprint here is a Reebok 162. And that is it for today. Let's have a look. Local officers having local knowledge is a big part of this job. You pick up little pieces here and there, which at the time are insignificant, but then it could be the whole key to something later on. In the summer, many of Lowestoft's break-ins happen in broad daylight, when the residents join the holiday makers on the beach. Inspector Donoghue and his team have been tipped off that a group of local lads have been seen leaving a house near the seafront. There's been an attempted break on London Road, just off London Road South. Um, descriptions given matches a male who's with a group of youths on London Road South at the moment. Um, a number of these youths have been uh, suspected of being involved in, in burglaries and thefts recently. Yeah, Barney, yeah, confirm you're going to turn them over. over. Confirm we are going to turn them over now. The boys have been spotted on a street corner less than 100 yards away. Turn them over, section one search, take them to one side. If we get problems with any of them, deal with them as per normal public order. Yeah, OK. Hands on Donahue intends to take the suspects by surprise. Got a runner. Got the baseball cap, legging it. Go on, the front, just something in his pocket. Inspector Donahue and his team are no match for young legs. Yeah. Fortunately, the runaway boys have been seen jumping over a fence by a passing motorist. Once again, it's the inspector who's leading from the front. But is he in time? In North Yorkshire, the great summer at home is also drawing thousands to the coast. More than a million visitors have come to sample the delights of the resort towns of Robin Hood's Bay, Whitby, and the most eminent of them all, Scarborough. Scarborough was Britain's first seaside resort. Victorians used to come here to take the waters. Today, it's more fish and chips than tea and scones. PC John Fawcett doesn't care about that. He's been a coastline cop for 15 years and doesn't care what the tourists eat. Look at this as a backdrop. It's absolutely fantastic. As you can see out there, all the ocean, lovely. Got boats out there. Really, really peaceful day like it is today. Not too windy. What else can anybody wish for? I've worked in the cities, but having worked out here now, in a seaside resort that we cover, I don't think I'd be as content working back in the big cities. You know, really enjoy myself out here, and that's what it's all about. It's the main bank holiday weekend. Very, very busy time for ourselves. Uh, roughly from about April through to September is our busiest time, holiday makers. I enjoy it. I do. I like meeting lots of people coming in from all over the area and that's probably one of the main reasons why I joined. You know, one minute we can be having a chat now, uh, looking at the scenery, and the next minute we could be getting dispatched to a, uh, a job. Named Nicola. She's described as four foot three, thin build, shoulder length, straight, blonde hair. Last seen evidence just over half an hour ago. We've uh, just got a report coming yeah. in over the radio that uh, there's a, a missing girl, nine years of age, uh, that's believed to have been missing 
about uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so. We're just going to have a, a quick scout around the area, see if we can see her. Hopefully she won't have wandered off too far. As soon as you hear that call coming in, that there's a lost child, your heart starts to flutter uh, and you get out there as quickly as possible. I've got three children of my own, under seven, so I know what the parents are thinking. She's not particularly streetwise. We've got a further update yeah. coming through now. Yeah, she's uh, not a local girl, so she doesn't know the area that well. Have they stated any places that she's likely to wander, such as arcades, toy shops, anything like that, would give us some sort of indication where she's likely to be? I've been down the seafront today, um, and that sort of held her interest. So I was just wondering whether she's made her way back down there. The girl's nine-year-old has been missing for about uh, 45 minutes, yeah, I believe, now, now, not 30 minutes. Really Most children, when they go wander off, they wander off for five or 10 minutes at a time. Uh, the main concern is if, if Dad's gone into one shop and the little girl's not seen her, she's probably panicked and she'll now be running around, possibly Excellent. trying to find Mum and Dad. For the coastline cops, there'll be more running around. As PC Fawcett tries to track down the little girl, 1466 control, go ahead. Inspector Donahue continues to hunt young burglars. And Sergeant Simpson has a sense of humor about terrorists. Checking to see that you haven't been to any terrorist training camps in Pakistan or anything. In Scarborough, on the North Yorkshire coast, PC John Fawcett is still trying to find a missing nine-year-old girl. She's been gone for almost an hour. We've got a young lass that's gone missing, nine-year-old. Uh, blonde straight hair, wearing a, a yellow floral sort of top with a, a white fleece and grey leggings. Can you keep an eye on for us? We're just going to have a quick look round at the moment. All right. Obviously, as, as you can appreciate, Quite a large amount of people about busy bank holiday weekend, uh, but at the moment the pri main priority is uh, is looking for this girl. 1466 control, go ahead. The police control room has news. Yeah, monitored. I'll make my way back to my vehicle. That being the case, at the moment uh, we've got a possible sighting by one of the lifeguards uh, on the south side of the beach area. So we're maybe looking down here outside the arcade, maybe a little bit further down. You'll have to excuse me if I have to shoot off rather quick. Hello mate. Hi there. There's a young girl that's gone missing, young nine year old, is yes, she here? She right. is, yeah. 1466 control, great news, got the little girl with me now. Oh yeah, you all right? Very brave, aren't you? Yeah. You've done well, haven't you? <laughs> We've been looking all over for you. <laughs> Lovely, we'll no get worries. off, mate. Yeah, that's excellent. All right, news. okay, no right. worries. Come on then, you want to ride in a police car? All right. What happened then? How come you wandered off? I was sitting on the bench. All right. Oh, we're not too worried. Your daddy's and your mummy's up there, so hopefully we're going to uh, get into the police car now and we'll go up and we'll see them. Don't get yourself worked up there. You've had a bit of a shock. Don't let that put you off. It's a nice place, this Scarborough. Where else have you been? Been to America? Have you been to Disneyland? And what do you think to Disneyland? It's really good, but not as good as Scarborough. Disneyland is not as good as Scarborough, and we've got that officially. There we go. You need to put your seatbelt on. All right. And then we'll go see uh, your dad. Every summer, Scarborough's coastline cops deal with 60 missing children alerts. Thank you. All right, makes our job worthwhile. All the stories that you hear. Well, enjoy the rest of your holiday. Yeah, I hope you. it's not put you off. All okay. right, thank you. Thank you. In Lower Stoff, Inspector Donahue is still hot on the trail of the young lad suspected of burglary. 
hide in the bushes at the back, Barney. Hide in the bushes around the back. The trouble is, they don't fit the description of the youths seen leaving the house earlier. And their trainers don't match the footprints found at previous burglaries. But they ran away from police, and that's a crime in Inspector Donahue's book. Sorry, Barney. We're going to fuck police. Should I just say? I'm in for that, yeah. Okay. PC Barney's going to challenge them with wasting police time, obstructing justice. We might not have caught them doing that particular burglary, but we'll, you know, we'll do our best to catch them in the next one. Any small offences, you keep getting among them, keep dealing with them positively, and eventually get the message. And the idea is just either disrupt or deter them or drive them elsewhere. Getting the message across won't solve Donahue's burglary crisis, but it should send a warning to those responsible. In the Solent, Hampshire's coastline cops are still trying to police the highlight of their summer, cows and the 8,000 sailors the regatta has attracted. Sergeant Simpson and his marine units have their work cut out, but it helps when you're a seafaring man yourself. Yeah, I do, I do a bit of sailing, which, uh, which comes in very useful on this job because you really need to know what a yachtsman is about to do in front of you. you need to, you need to understand that he is restricted by the wind direction um, and by his draft. And, and, and being a sailor gives you a bit, of a bit of a clue as to what they may do. I've got to be honest, I don't think my boat would compete very well. I do, I do compete in our club races. I consistently come last, but I, I thoroughly enjoy myself. Sergeant Simpson won't be doing any sailing himself today. He's far too busy. Nearly half of Britain's pleasure craft are now moored here. Everything from luxury yachts to customised runabouts. They're all an attractive proposition for criminals. And with boats coming from all over the world, Simpson also has to fulfil his counter-terrorism duties. <clears throat> Hello? Hello, how do you do? Do you speak English? Thank heavens, because I don't speak Dutch. <laughs> well, I'd just like to take a few details from you, if I may. Could I, could I see your passport? This is mine. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much. Just checking to see that you haven't been to any terrorist training camps in Pakistan or anything, but uh, okay. would appear not. We are mainly a cat terrorist unit. <laughs> We've got no reason whatsoever to suspect that these people are Dutch terrorists or anything, anything similar. Uh, but we just need to get the message across to anybody out there who's thinking of coming into the UK that if you do come into the waters of Hampshire or the Isle of Wight, then there's uh, every chance that police officers uh, are going to come on your boat and just have a, a friendly chat and uh, check your documentation, what you're doing here and where you've come from, etc. Lovely. All right, well, thank you very much. Okay. Enjoy your time. Well, thank you very yeah, much. Okay. Okay. Thank Sorry you. to disturb okay. you. In the northwest of England, the Cumbrian coast was once dominated by a network of large coal mines and factories. When the coal industry fell into decline, the seaports had to look to tourism for a lifeline. One such is Maryport, a tiny harbour town situated on the Solway estuary. 11,000 people live here. In charge of the local police is Inspector George Nevins. He spent 23 years as a CID officer investigating major criminals, drug gangs and armed robbers. Three years ago, he swapped his detective's badge for a uniform to become a coastline cop. It's worlds apart, you know. You're not you're not following a drug dealer at 100 miles an hour down a motorway, or or sitting in Heathrow Airport, you know, in the departure lounge next to him whilst he's waiting to fly to Amsterdam to to get his drugs. You know, you, it would never enter my mind to to have gone back into uniform after 23 years on CID. But uh, honestly, it's the best thing that's ever happened. I absolutely love it. The highlight of Maryport's summer is its blues festival, now in its 11th year. 40,000 music fans are expected, and trouble will inevitably accompany them. On any weekend, you know, there will be incidents of antisocial behaviour, there will be incidents of drunkenness, there will be incidents of domestic violence. That's in most towns on most weekends. But this weekend, we've got upwards of 40 to 50,000 people here, so, you know, there's a lot of drink flying around, you know, the pubs are open later than they'd normally be, so it has the potential to increase violence. 
ideal for me is that everybody who comes here has a, has a brilliant weekend, nobody's injured and all my staff are safe and uh, the community is all safe. The sun is out, the music is pumping. For now at least, the fans are singing the blues and sinking the booze. We normally have an on-street drinking ban in Mary Port, but on occasions such as this, we allow people to drink outside in either cans or plastic cups. No glasses though, um, because it'd be impossible to stop people drinking at this time of year. People like to sit outside and enjoy the sunshine and enjoy performances, and I think it would cause more of a problem if we tried to stop people drinking in the area. Mary Port has 15 pubs, many of them close to the old harbour. PC's Louise Tall and Dave Chewer have been told to keep an eye on the people who are drinking there. PC Tall is five foot six, and she used to work in retail sales before she became a coastline cop. Basically going from a, a nine to five desk job Monday to Saturday to um, shifts, days, nights, unsociable hours. So very, very big change. Like sometimes you come home from work and think, yes, I've had the best day. And sometimes you come home from work and you think, why do I do it? PC Chua hopes they won't be wondering why this time. I don't know what time exactly the uh, bands are all due to finish, but um, you know we're here till one o'clock. So I'm assuming everything will finish before then. Um, and hopefully everyone will uh, just have a good night and go home peacefully and uh, be looking forward to next year's event. So uh, fingers crossed. Inspector Nevins isn't crossing his fingers. He's already got a sense that trouble is brewing. Some people have been drinking, you know, for quite a few hours now. So, you, you know, as you can see as you're walking around, the, the, the individuals have changed, you know, the, the demeanour's changed. Um, you know, and obviously so, some of the local, uh, what we'll probably call idiots, uh, are, are in town. So you can, you can expect something happening, you know. Coming up, Don't Inspector Donoghue is on the run again. More summer blues in Maryport. And what can Sergeant Simpson do with a drunken sailor? I don't know whether I'm actually drunk. Yeah, I've had a few pims and lemonade. It's shocking, isn't it? In Maryport, West Cumbria, the Blues Festival is finished and most of the visitors are gone. But 40,000 people leave a lot behind. You just have to look at it, it's not exactly uh, what you want to see, I think. I'd say as far as the rest of the day has gone so far, it's been very well natured, so you've got to hope that it's going to be that way again tonight. However, the amount of drink that's been taken on board, it could change at any minute. So. PC Chew has got no time to join in the front tide. Reports are coming in of an incident at the harbour. Yeah, Sean, we're on our way down. It. Somebody's fallen uh, into the uh, oh. bottom of the harbour. Let's make a way, lads. Let me in there, Paul. Down there, Straight down here, Paul. A man who's been drinking has fallen off the harbour wall. The water's very shallow down the bottom. He's caught his neck on some stone down there. Got a bit of a laceration on his neck. Oh my god. Are they still alive? Yeah, they are. I don't know if he's got any injuries to his back or his spine, so we're going to need to get him out of the water. And get him out. I just want to watch, watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Uh, got bad neck injuries or he can't feel anything, we're going to have to leave him there. Maybe have to lift him out with a helicopter or something like that. PC Tall was one of the first to get to the man. How is he? I don't think we can really tell yet. He's uh, probably got some quite nasty internal injuries, if not a broken leg or two. <laughs> But the fact that he's drunk is making it quite hard to get any sort of sensible response out of him or find out where it's hurting. We're going to need 20 yards clearance all the way around. We've got the helicopter coming in. Right, you're all moving back, please. Thank you. Everybody, back down. Get down, please. 
Basically, we just got to clear the area, make sure that everyone's safe, and then the helicopter's coming in. It's going to be the safest, easiest, and quickest route of getting him out of where he is now and getting him towards the hospital. It's a crucial time. If the man does have a spinal injury, his life could be in danger. He needs to be taken to hospital quickly. But there is no easy way to get him out. Just the ambulance is nothing, they're going to have to get down here and uh, all the fire crews. Keys. In Lower Stoft, uh, Inspector Donahue is still trying to work dip. out how to put an end to the spate of burglaries in the town. John, jump in me. But tonight he keeps getting distracted by visitors. He just can't seem to savour the joys of summer without a punch up. I've got Mike. Hey, oh, Juliet. Yeah, the report of a fight near one of the clubs about uh, eight males gathered around one who's lying on the floor. Blood coming from his uh, his face. Check that out. Bouncers have given descriptions of the ringleaders. Dogs, go, John. Stay there. Where's the other one? Where's the other one? With two men in handcuffs, Inspector Donahue needs to find out who caused the fracas. Luckily, someone's ready to help. A young man in a hat. Andre, I don't know, mate. Do something, can you stand over there a second? No, I do one, fella. No, no you honestly. Do one. Do one. Mate, oh. I, I really would, mate. Hi. I really wouldn't, fella. Walk away now. Me to do one. Honestly, mate. Sorry. I don't know if he's involved, Glenn. So... Bloke with a hat, can you hold him for a second? Yeah. Sometimes people are too keen to get involved with the police. Inspector Donahue radios a colleague to find out more about the helper with the hat. There's a bloke uh, stood over here outside the hush with me, bloke up with a, a hat. Is he, um, is he involved? I've got nothing to do with it, buddy. Nothing to do with it, I, honestly. Well, there's no need to come over and start yeah, coming up with me, was it? called me about a hat. No, no, when you came over the first time. Did you? Oh, no, 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 because I know him. Yeah, but there's no need to get involved, is there? No, no, I'm sorry. Right, OK, then. It's all right. Cheers, mate. All right, going to have a good night, then. That's it. For now, yeah, Inspector Donahue is content Thanks, to leave things be. In Maryport, the coastline cops aren't worried about brawling lads. They're still struggling to get their injured man out of the harbour. Where's he going? Steps, are we getting up here? Steps. Right, we just found out the helicopter's not coming now. It's going to be an hour, so obviously we can't wait that long. So this gentleman's now going to be walked right across there. There's a set of steps at the other end of the, uh, of the harbour. They're going to try and walk him up the steps. That's going to be the only alternative we've got. It's not obviously the chosen one that we'd have wanted to have gone down, but Obviously, we can't wait an hour for a helicopter um, when this gentleman's obviously got quite bad injuries. What are we going to do? We're going to lift him straight over there, are we? Right. Going straight over. Fingers crossed the fella's going to be all right. For the police officers involved in the rescue, there's no time for a long shower. PC Tall is needed to help deal with the drunk from one of the pubs, who's not at all happy about being locked up in a police van. Do you know what? I've lost all scale of time. I have absolutely no idea. Come out the road. Come on. I'm mainly dry. I think I've still got some mud in places, like a maze. Well, apparently his party trick is to hang off bridges, and today it went wrong because he fell off. I hope he's all right. He looked to have some nasty injuries, and it did. It took us a while to. His location was just so awkward to get to. Um, but we got there, we got him out, and he's off to hospital now. So he's in the right hands. Four hundred miles south on the Solent, Cow's Week has reached its climax. Sergeant Simpson faces the most testing part of the entire week. At least fifty thousand glasses of champagne have been drunk at the regatta. Unfortunately, this is the one night of the year that people that never go out in their boat in the hours of darkness are out. A little bit extra drinking goes on in the, uh, in the town and on their boats and what have you. Um, and it's a different world out here when it's dark. Boats without lights are potentially lethal. Even when the sailors in them know what they're doing. If you're going to go out at night on a dinghy like that, you need everything. You need full set of whites, you need the reds and greens. But even if you've got a hand torch, it's better than what you have got, isn't it? There will be no end to the warnings given by Sergeant Simpson tonight. Yeah, we've got one here, some idiot, um, who thinks he's immune from everything. The ocean sea nearly ran you down, because they didn't see you. 
another disaster averted. We will just have a chat with this dinghy and um, teach them the error of their ways. I'll just take your details and we'll leave it as a warning, all right? Just a classic example of very experienced yachtsman, knows exactly what lights he should have. And for some reason, I just think that they don't need lights when they're coming out. I thought they're immune or that everyone's got night vision or something. Then in the dark, another dinghy, without lights and sailing over the speed limit. I mean, I don't know how many criminal offences you've committed tonight. You've got no lights. That yeah. is an offence. You are drunk in charge of your vessel. Yeah. That is also an offence. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Well, I don't know whether I'm actually drunk. Yeah, I, I, I've had a few pims and lemonade, but I've not been... Well, I've, I've, never, I've never met you sober, but in my opinion, okay. you've had too much to drink. Send All right? Them you're slurred. Yeah, OK. Um, so then what's in your... And what, I've got no intention of letting you carry on in this state, all right? Okay. So I'm going to tow you back to your berth, okay. East Casmarine. It's not the coastline cops who rule the waves here. It's the harbour master who will decide this man's fate come daylight. It's a very difficult defence to prove. There's no power of arrest that goes with it. There's no power to demand a breath test, no power to demand a, uh, a sample of blood. Um, and they could cause all sorts of havoc out here whilst drunk. Cumbria, Inspector George Nevins doesn't let his drunks go yeah. He locks them up. It's just turned 12 o'clock by my watch on uh, Saturday night. Um, starting to warm up. I mean, at the present, there's uh, nine in the cells out of a possible uh, 15, 16 that we've got. And there are two more. Young men who have been fighting outside a nightclub. They've clearly had more than pins and lemonade. And one claims he's been roughed up by the coastline cops who arrested him. How are you doing? I'm a doing. See these, these one here? Yeah. He's bullied right. me. What's your number? Two or two. Calm yourself down, fella. What's your number? Calm yourself down. Cut the swearing and calm yourself down. Yeah. Man and me! Okay, man. I'm just keeping it down. Don't mind the cell, man. Talk to me. All right. Calm yourself down and we'll have to go straight to the cell. The lad had surely been drinking. <laughs> but he also might have taken something else. <laughs> Inspector Nevins is concerned. The young man's his responsibility. But only his mate can provide an answer to the behaviour. What's he been taking? Nothing. Just me. That's not. That's what it's like when he gets arrested for that's not just drink, mate. Now, from a medical point of view, we might need to help him. Have you drunk the same as what he's drunk? No, I've had to go to that. He can go to that much. Because your pupils are completely different to his. That's not normal behaviour. No. From your point of view, we're not we're not trying to trip you up or out no, like that, mate. All I'm trying like. to do is find out that's what he's what he's like. taking. Don't help him. The lad in the cells is, uh, in my opinion, taking some rules and drink. And uh, his behaviour, you know, he's really going to seriously hurt himself. Get back! Get back! So, in this situation, we've, we've got to protect, try and protect him. The only way we want to protect him is to put leg restraints on him and handcuffs and, and try and keep him in a position so he just can't damage himself any further. Is it good please have a drink? Just calm down. Yeah, good. <laughs> three, I'm going to lift you up. Okay? Yeah. One, two, three. Nice. Right, see put your back on there. So put your legs on there. Just calm yourself down. Okay? And then we'll get it sorted out. Seems to be a bit better now. He's having a drink of water right. now, so he's calming himself down. <laughs> Until he actually starts coming down off the drugs, there's not much we can do other than try and protect him. He's going to wake up in the morning with some very sore bones and, mu and muscles. In Lowestoft, 
Inspector Donahue has a pair of brawling lads in custody, and he's not happy about it either. It's gone silly tonight. It's been just job to job to job. He wants to get on with his main mission, finding the lads who've been robbing his residence. If the man in the hat will let him. Oh, shut up. He's the captain, bad time. The man has put himself in the way once too often. Inspector Donahue is not a cop who tolerates obscene gestures. What the f am I getting done for? For displaying that sign to us. Outside hush, oh, outside mug. Oh, you mug. Oh, you mug. I was done walking home, doing nothing, minding my own business. Minding my own business. Yeah. The man is now facing a second charge, assaulting a police officer with his foot. Usually, offenders are seen by a custody sergeant before being locked up. But when someone is resisting arrest like this, they go directly to the cells. Face down. It's been around since legs towards the door. You are using too much force. We're clear. Close. Done. We'll take a tough line on, on um, basically disorder and behaviour. Um, I mean, not be said he can't go out and have a few drinks and have a good time, but when he steps over the line and starts um, basically being disorderly or especially threatening towards police officers, then uh, we'll take a, a zero tolerance approach on that. It will be zero tolerance too at Maryport, as Inspector Nevins's night shift turns even darker. But they've gone for every room. And Inspector Donahue gets a crack at his burglars at last. In Lowestoft, on the coast of Suffolk, it's all quiet on the seafront. But in the back streets, coastline cop Inspector Donahue and his sidekick PC Mark Barney have at last begun their crackdown on local burglars, the ones who leave shoe prints behind. Two males, dark clothing, back yard, and hanging this from the back door, and somebody's carrying a duvet, made off from the alley at the back of Edgerton Road. Wheelie bin's been used to get over the gate. There's no footprint on it. Has anybody spoken to informant yet? The owners of the house are on holiday. A neighbour saw two young lads force their way into the house and called the police. But they've gone for every room. Now back, PC Barney right. and the rest of the team are trying to right. work out which way the burglars went. It doesn't take long. They left in a hurry, dropping some of the stuff yeah, they George. stole. Jewelry and the laptop. Again, mate. We've got some, uh, some property yeah, in the back. There's a Y8, look, straight out onto the road. Yeah. Donahue's coastline cops all live locally and recognise the house mm. behind which the stolen goods are lying. Bet you. Yeah. A convicted young Did burglar lives there? just a few doors away. That goes straight out onto the road. There's no gates or anything. We do have somebody nearby who, um, who is known to us. It's probably just a little bit coincidental that um, this house is just down the road from theirs and the um, property that was found abandoned was found over their back fence. But um, unfortunately, um, coincidence isn't enough to, uh, to go and nick him. A coincidence is enough for Inspector Donahue to justify paying his suspect a house call. The suspect's house is in darkness and no one's coming to the door. <laughs> But a few streets away, a chase is on. Two young lads have been spotted, and they're on the run. In Maryport, Inspector Nevins is in the police call centre. It seems the hunch he had earlier was right. Was that the butchers? He's getting reports of a fight outside the Butcher's Arms in Maryport. It's on CCTV, but the call centre doesn't have a feed. Inspector Nevins only has his police radio. An officer's pressed the emergency button on the radio, which goes live for 10 seconds, so they're obviously desperately... So I've deployed somebody. Who's going on? Sergeant Jackson, 971 to 10 to Jackson 1971 is one of his most experienced officers, Jacko to his colleagues. He's been sent as backup. Somebody pressing again. It's 
It's gone again. The situation is going from bad to worse. A female officer is now being attacked, and when Jackson calls for help, you jump. There's a group of males now trying to get her, get her free. <coughs> so you know it's bad when Jack was asking for help. <coughs> you might want to put your seatbelt on, Ian. Evans needs to get to the scene fast. Female officers under attack is his worst nightmare. My wife is a policewoman and she is very good at, um, at talking to people and, and, and diffusing situations. But yes, I do, I do worry about her on night shift because some of these individuals, it takes half a dozen people to, uh, to control them, you know, not just one person. Three zero one five at scene. More coastline cops have also rushed to the fight, and the man who is attacking the policewoman is now in handcuffs, if not yet fully subdued. As usual, local knowledge comes in handy. Inspector Nevins knows the man well. The meal that was arrested is, um, is a big violent meal, and he's, his face is covered in tattoos, and he's irregular. Get out of this bag. Haven't seen anything, John? No. The female officer has had a close call. She's punched two or three times and had a, a lot of her hair pulled out. <laughs> and now a woman is facing a public order charge. It's all quiet at the scene at the minute. There's no other patrols needed, just in case there's some still travelling. Quiet, maybe. The shift isn't over yet. In Lowestoft, Inspector Donahue and PC Barney are still after the two young burglars who did a runner. Let's look a bit more promising. One of them has now been detained, but the other one is still out there. Which, which way did he go? I literally pulled out of the school. Yeah. Up there. These two were walking down here. I got about 100 yards down, and then there was only him here. PC Barney thinks the second burglar is long gone, and it's time to call it a night. But his boss is having none of it. Even though there's no sign of the lad, he's found the next best thing, a size eight. <laughs> How do you manage that? Shoes and footprints have been at the core of this operation. This is a breakthrough. Two burglaries took place in Blunderstone and Corton on the 20th, and the footwear impression which was recovered was a Reebok 162. Right, stuck on the top of that fence, so he's obviously desperately away for something. Belch. Yeah. There you go. Hands your head, hands your head, hands on your head. Put your hands on your head. I've gone behind, I've gone behind. Right. I don't even know what the hell I'm being nicked for. Right, what are you going to come out of that garden then? Because my mate's gone somewhere. No, he ain't. The second lad, their prime suspect, isn't carrying anything which ties him to any break That's, That's OK, just stay calm. He is wearing only one on shoe. Two shoes. Where's your shoes? Where's your heel? My shoes over that garden over there. So you've done, you've done, you've climbed through a couple of gardens, have you? No, I jumped this next one, this one, from that alleyway there. PC Barney is in his element. If he can match the footprints found at the house which was broken into earlier to the prime suspect's shoes, then they have their man. And that means being clever with his mobile phone. That other footwear impression, how long is it close? Yeah, that other, one of those footprints is the guy he's with. Right, you, sit your eyes down there, go on, and don't move. No, on the, on the ground, cross your legs under you. Right, stay there. There's uh, three sets of footprint in that, gar that garden. Yeah. One of them, I'm happy, matches him. Right. Nick him says burglary. Him says burglary. Long time coming, man, right? You're under arrest and suspicion of burglary. Okay. You got the same thing that may have me offence. You've got to mention my question. Some should like to line call. VL one tell. Yeah. Read the uh, burglary edge and road two arrested. Yeah. We'll lift you up on your feet. Ready? One, two, three. Up to your feet. Okay, mate. Got his other shoe. It's the result Inspector Donoghue wanted, and it's an arrest that PC Barney thought would never happen. I owe you an apology for being a naysayer. Apology accepted, PC Barney. <laughs> See, 18 years of experience over a mere pup like you. Yeah, what do I know? Hey, what do you know, mate? Stick with me, son, I'll teach you it all. <laughs> <laughs> In West Cumbria, 
Inspector Nevins and his coastline cops are also pleased with themselves. Their prisoner, who tried to harm himself, is now a happy man. How was your head anyway? Oh, it's all right. Yeah, all right. Let you get your head down. Uh, it was on knacking. For Nevins, it's proof positive that he was right to swap the big city lights for the Cumbrian coastline. It's very, very satisfying when you can do something to help the community. You know, you can't measure that really. You can't, you know, get as much pleasure out of that as I would getting locking somebody up for murder or importing drugs. And the sen yeah, the sentences are different, but it's it's not all about that. You know, I've done that. Been there, worn the t-shirt. Somebody else does it now. Next week, the summer wonders of Loch Lomond, spoiled by drugs. Keep your hands in your pockets for me. Food, glorious food, until it all goes wrong. Don't go round calling coppers. I was talking. Saturday night is fight for the coastline. The adrenaline, definitely pumping.